And a very pleasant good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to University of Tampa and Rollins College basketball. Women's game coming up here at 2 o'clock. And shortly thereafter, about a half hour after that one ends, we'll have the men's game between Richard Schmidt's club and Tom Klusman's team from Rollins College. I'm Scott Lynn. Jack Ike is alongside. We'll have the broadcast for you today. Uh, I'll handle the women's play-by-play, and then Jack will take over the men's game. And it's going to be a good afternoon of basketball. I'll have the insightful analysis. There you go. I'm the looking forward to game. that. Yes, yes. Um, it's still early in the Sunshine State Conference season. Tampa at 2-0 and in conference play at this point. Though only 3-3 three and three on the season. They've, they've had a pretty daunting non-conference schedule, and I think it's probably going to pay dividends later for the Spartans. But early in the season, a lot of new faces, and just getting everybody used to everybody is taking a little time. Rollins comes in with an 0-1 record, yet 6-2 and yeah. overall on the season. They lost their most recent game Wednesday night, 66-61 at Embry-Riddle. And then uh, at the same time that that game was going on, Tampa was overcoming an 18-point third-quarter deficit with about two minutes left in the third. They were down 18, managed to come back and beat Eckerd 57-54. to Chris Nelson leading the way with a game uh, uh, 17 points, five assists, but uh, and she hit a big three-pointer late. It was a, an exciting game, and it did ri- raise UT's SSC record at 2-0. and Again, Rollins 0-1-1. This is a, a game that they feel like, you know what, we feel like we can win here because the last time they played here, which happened to be in last year's SSC tournament, right. they yeah. knocked off Tampa here at the Martinez the Athletic first round Center. Game. Yeah. Now, the good thing for the Spartans, Chris Nelson is back. She's been out, came back 17 points against Deckard. I think she... Not only is she scoring well this year, but she offers so much more as a floor leader, and I think that may help the ball club moving forward. Well, I talked a little bit with Glenn Wilkes, Jr., who is in his 34th season. He's the third winningest active coach in NCAA Division II with a record of 715 wins and 266 losses. Of course, Tom Jesse in his 27th year leading Tampa, a 515 and 256 record. There's a lot of wins across the court oh, here, and, huh? and the men's game has two 700-game winners coming up, so we have got a lot lot of winners. We've got about uh, 3,000 wins. <laughs> I know. It's going to be incredible. Today. So uh, it's going to be a fun game today. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Uh, Glenn Wilkes Jr. told me that he, he really likes his team. He, he said, we're going to be really good by January and February. He played all freshmen and sophomores last year. They're better this year because of the experience factor. He said, uh, and you add in, we got three really good freshman bigs, a really good freshman class, uh, and we've got players, two players in particular, who had been injured, and we'll talk about that as we Go. But they have been injured the last couple of seasons, and they're back full strength now. So uh, Glenn Wilkes Jr. thinks his team's going to be really good. They were picked to finish fifth in the SSC. Uh, Tampa picked to win it. Right. So we'll see what happens here today. Could be a very good basketball game for sure. We're going to have a quick momentary break here for our national anthem, and then we'll give you the starting lineups, and we'll tip this puppy off <laughs> here in Tampa. It's a beautiful day outside, about 70, oh, awesome. 70 degrees. This is why people move to Florida. Oh, yeah, man.
beautiful rendition of the Star Spangled Banner here on this beautiful Saturday afternoon in Tampa, Florida. The starting lineups, first four, the Rollins College Tars. They are starting number four, Jalen Harrison. She is the motor. She is the person that runs this team. She's the leading scorer at 12 points a game, but does so much more. The 5'4 senior out of Orlando, Florida. Number five, Asia Newsom, a 5'9 guard out of Kissimmee. She's a sophomore, starting at one of the guard spots. It's a three-guard line. I chose Rollins because the Spanish Mediterranean architecture is just beautiful. The weather's great. We're in uh, central Florida. We're right on Lake Virginia, and I couldn't turn any of that down. Rollins gave me that ability and that foundation that I needed to go into the world, and I think that I wouldn't have got that experience anywhere else. But she's only now, some two years later, back to full strength. Deanna Rosser, a 5'11", redshirt. This is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams. Discover your talents. Get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. Said back at the point, one of the co-captains, she's number 12, 5'4", senior out of Augusta, Georgia. Played a couple years at Temple College. She is now one of the players that makes the Tampa Spartans go. Number 13, Dory Nodge, the other co-captain of the Tampa Spartans. 6'2", redshirt junior out of Hungary. She made first team all SSC a year ago, and she was the SSC newcomer of the year last season. And a player who has a chance to be a newcomer of the year this year is... Number 23, LaShayla Wright Ponder. She starts at the forward center position, redshirt junior, a transfer out of Bloomington, Minnesota. She played two years at Hampton University. And number 24 is Malia Sullivan. We saw her a little bit as a freshman last year. This is a sophomore with a lot of skill. She can play the three swings between guard and forward, 5'11 sophomore. And she is out of Winter Haven High School, Bartow, Florida. We're ready to go. The ball is in the air. And and the Spartans got the tip, but Rollins comes away with the basketball. And we're underway here at 2 o'clock straight up. Boy, they have right on the mark here as far as getting it on, on time. Harrison, defended by Nelson, gives the ball up. They're going inside. This is Rosser inside. No good. Nudge pulls down the rebound, and she can handle the ball in transition. Pushes the hell to Nelson. Nelson gets it into right ponder. Might have got away with a step. Now it's to Ingram in the near side. She brings it up on top. Rollins in a man-to-man -to, -man to start, yeah. and that's probably a surprise to Tom Jesse. He thought they'd play probably zone almost 38 minutes of this game. Well, maybe this is the two minutes where he said they, they'd be in a man. <laughs> Spartans got another 20 seconds. Ball hit the rim. Try to get it into right ponder. They're going to call Rosser reaching over the top, apparently. You look at the uh, individual stats, the Spartans have four players averaging in double digits. That includes Chris Nelson, who has only played three games this year. But Rollins has just one player in double digits, yet they score five more points a game than the Spartans do. Much deeper bench, no question. Driving is Nelson. Gets it to right ponder. Shot is blocked, tipped away there by Newsom, and here comes Rollins pushing it in transition. Had numbers a little bit. Now the whistle and a foul. I think Sullivan going to be called. Sullivan kind of rode Newsom out of bounds there. Jalice Oliver is one of the officials, along with Courtney Steiferak and Carlos De Jesus. That's your three officiating crew from the Sunshine State Conference here today. Leah gives it up near side to Pluviosi. She hands off. They zip the ball around to the other side. This is Harrison. Inside it goes. And an open look and no no good. Rosser had it. Still easy, waiting for that first basket. Yeah, an easy five-footer just didn't get it to go. Nelson used the pick. Got free. Ooh, could not get the ball to nudge. It goes to Ingram on top. Inside it goes to Nudge. Nice entry pass by Julia Ingram and the first basket of the game scored by Dory Nudge. 
They are really leaning on Dory, and that pass just got there. Once she got there, the player had fallen off her. Tom Jesse said this team did his team did not play well as that three pointer is knocked down by Asia Newsom. His team did not play well at Eckerd on Wednesday night until they were down 18, and then all of a sudden we started making shots. It wasn't that we played any differently. We just stopped turning the ball over. 15 turnovers in the first half, only three in the second half, as Chris Nelson puts Tampa back on top with the easy deuce. Rollins came out in a full-court press after making the basket. Luviosi on the baseline, and now a whistle and a foul. Right ponder is going to be called for the foul, her first. And It will stay Rollins' ball. 16 seconds on the shot clock. Inbound it comes Harrison. Gives it up. They have good spacing as you'd expect from a Glenn Wilkes team. And there's a nice shot again by Newsom. She's got all five of their points. And again, the full court pressure you talked about. And it's a, it's a zone and they do it all the way. Sullivan drives, is fouled, and she'll shoot a couple of free throws. Good sportsmanship by Newsom. She helps Sullivan off the court. Newsom's found a way to get open on the last two shots. She's had pretty good clearance on both of them. And checking in is uh, Sylvia Garcia, one of those big freshmen that we talked about. 6'2 freshman out of Spain. Scored a career-high eight points against Puerto Rico Bayamon. Interestingly, Rollins has played three colleges from Puerto Rico in their early uh, part right, of their weren't season. Two of them back to back against yeah. the same team, Maya Guez. Yeah, and they were. Yeah, so that four of their apart. four of their games have been against Puerto Rico schools. Yeah. Three different schools, four games. First free throw, good. So is the second. Spartans have played some of those teams in the past. Never yes. that quite heavy a schedule. Oh, yeah. So right now, Rollins is leading that conference. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. Tampa's made its first two free throws here today. You know, when we did our last women's game, they had barely missed any free throws. But their shooting from the line is is not as good. They're, they're down to just 77% for yeah. the season. All the way in. Drive no good by Leah. If I remember right, they're almost like 20 for 20 at one point. Yeah. Close to it. Nelson will set it up 6-5. Teams just kind of feeling each other out here in the early going, it seems. Nelson gets it inside to right ponder. Usually that's a bucket yeah. with the left hand. She doesn't get that one to go. Pretty good defense by the 6-2 Garcia. Newsom with it. Dribbles to the left side. There's a three-point shot a little long by Leah. Ball nearly stolen by Harrison. Got a hand on it, but it went to right ponder. Now Nelson. Well, I'll tell you what. Harrison is a tough defender, isn't she? Yep. Nudge shoots a jumper, is fouled on the shot, so she'll shoot a couple. The foul is on 13, Pluviosi, her first. And checking in is Yari Martinez Toro, the other player who is playing healthy for the first time in a while. She suffered a concussion two years ago and missed some time. Last year, she suffered a broken leg when she wow. was hit by a car and uh, just really did not is only healthy once again now. So good to see her back in full strength. Both free throws down, Tampa leading by three. 
Dory Nodge hit a big three-pointer in that comeback win over Eckerd the other night. L late. You don't think of her as being the three-point shooter, but Tom Jesse had told us before the season she's really worked on her shot. The shot no good by Martinez Toro. Rebound by Wright Ponder. She is a double-double type machine. <laughs> yeah. You watch Wright Ponder yes. by the end of the day is going to be in double-figure rebounds. I'd be almost willing to bet you on that. There's Nudge, Nothing. fake the three. Sullivan steps inside, baseline nice. jumper, good. Nudge and Wright Ponder both at eight and a half rebounds a game. And both are double digit scorers. Well over double digits on the scoring. Harrison hands off to Martinez Toro. Two very good guards. She's got a big size advantage. Now Nelson switches back on to Harrison. There's a three point shot, and it's drained Boy. by Pluviosi. Louis just her third made three-pointer of the season. She was two for ten prior to that one. Ingram, now it's inside the right ponder. Shoots it up and in. She's really good with either hand. I was a little surprised to see her come back and shoot it with the right hand yeah. there. Right Ponder's first bucket to go with three rebounds. Nudge and Sullivan lead the way right now for Tampa with four apiece. It's 12-8. Tampa on top. Loviosi gives it. Newsom drives. Tough shot. No good. And there's Right Ponder with the big mitt going up high with the one hand. It's already four rebounds. Nelson, Right Ponder. Ball. Oh, a whistle on a foul. Newsom. It's going to be called for the foul. That's her first. And the fourth. This is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams. Discover your talents. Get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. Sullivan with 20 attempts and Wright Ponder with 18. So that's just kind of what Nudge is known for is getting to the line a lot. Right. She's also one of the top. She has eight and a half rebounds a game, but she also averages almost. Rollins, you're probably not listening to us. I'm, I'm wasting my breath right yes. here because Robert Siegel is on a local yeah. radio station yep. and everybody, I'm sure, is listening to Robert. But if you happening happen to be watching, we would welcome you well, as well. The only question is whether his audio syncs up to our video. That's right. That, I, I, I understand what you're talking about. That can be maddening. <laughs> yeah. We've seen this before in other broadcasts and so forth. Skip pass out on top. Nelson to Ingram. Open three. She's usually money. Does not get that one to go. Good hustle by three Spartans to yeah. keep the ball in this side of the court. Ingram's really struggled shooting the last three games. And Tom Jesse's hoping that she can get turned around here. That was an open look. As I say, she usually is good. Oh, a nice feed inside. And Nudge is fouled. And we'll go to the line for Dory two. should have gone straight up there. She kind of leaned into the player to make sure she got the foul. And consequently got the foul but missed the shot. It's the fifth team foul of the quarter, so all of them. I mean, it was in the act of shooting, obviously, but from here on out for the rest of the period, the final 308, Tampa will be shooting two free throws on every whistle. The foul was on Daniels, Denise Daniels, her first. She's a 5'10 senior from Orlando, played at Colonial High School. I believe Karma Jeremy was from Colonial. Daniels, this is the first game, I believe, that she has not started this year. 
A long shot, no good by Martinez Toro. Nelson chased it down, throws ahead to right ponder. Managed to corral it, puts it up, no good. Got a little bit too far under the basket and did the best she could. Did a nice job to corral the long pass. Leah off the dribble, defended by Sullivan. Hands it to Daniels. They zip the ball around. Here is the freshman. Throws it off the glass. No good. Offensive rebound by Daniels. Leah is open to the lane, and she drains it. Tampa's lead was five. It's three now at 13-10. Scott Lynn along with Jack Ike. Nice to have you along. Whichever school you're work looking for, rooting for. Nelson in free pass is knocked away. Oh, and they're going to call a foul on Garcia, I believe. It looked like she got all ball there. It looked clean. We're farther away, not at the same angle, though. <laughs> right. And, and right Ponder, again, is a big body and probably had her on her backside pretty well. Probably was a little contact. Right Ponder drains the free throw. 83% free throw. I was just going to say, yeah. you know, you look at her as a big, sometimes you don't expect them to be the best free throw shooter on your team, and right now she is. Yes. Drain both free throws. She's got four points now. Nudge leading the way with five. It's 15-10 Tampa. Martinez Toro dribbles, keeps the dribble, finds the freshman who scores nice with the left hand. Beautiful feed and a good finish by Garcia. She looked a lot more comfortable going to the rim from that side than she did about a minute earlier from the other side. Garcia, as I mentioned, is from Spain, has a little bit of that international flavor. You can kind of see, runs the floor well and all. Nelson, I think, threw the ball away. Uh, yep. yep. She thought the ball was tipped, but, I, you know, from our angle, we couldn't tell. No. I thought it might have hit right ponder and gone out of bounds. Yeah. But she kind of, Sullivan got caught in, in kind of a no-man's land there and just yeah. was looking to get rid of it. Driving down the lane is Rachel Jablonski. No good. Jablonski, number 11, 5'8", junior from Orlando, Lake Highland Prep. There were three new starters today in, in this game, so it'll be interesting to talk to Glenn Wilson to find out why he changed this, maybe match-up issue. Nudge through it, right ponder. Wow. How did she get that one in? <laughs> my, oh my, what a finish. Right ponder now with six, tops in the game. Jablonski gives it up, a whistle right and ponder. a foul on right ponder. And Garcia. May looked to sit her with her second foul. Yeah, there. just the second, I'm sorry, third team foul. So no free throws here. But you're right. Leah Abney getting ready to check in. Martinez Toro sits down as Denise Daniels is in the game. And Newsom inbounds the ball under the basket. She's back in the game, and here they come, quickly working it inside. Comes back to Jablonski. Jablonski shoots, no good, and Nudge went to get that rebound. That's her fourth. Nelson calls out the play. They stay in a man. Boy, beautiful cut. Nice feed by Nudge. Sullivan with the basket. She's got six. Biggest lead for Tampa. Seven right now. Late here in the first quarter. Newsom, who scored quick five points, but scoreless since. Defended by Nelson. Nelson's awfully quick, but a five good size advantage by Newsom. With three seconds left, Sullivan's going to pick up her second foul. Yep. And free throws coming for Rollins. 2.4 seconds left. Denise Daniels to the charity strike. 71% free throw shooter. Tom Jesse walked up and down the bench. Decided not to make a change. Maybe with two seconds, he's just going to wait till the quarter. I was just about to say, Daniels is the leading free throw shooter on the team at 71%. I guess I would have jinxed her had I said that. Oh, yeah. I guess I jinxed her by <laughs> thinking about it. Twice. And she missed them both. Nudge. 
no good as the horn sounds and the first quarter comes to an end. 19-12, Tampa on top. The Spartans shoot 60% in the first quarter, 6 out of 10 from the floor, missed their only 3-point attempt, but they are... game they've whoever said that less is more is more or less mathematically challenged less isn't more it's less and the only thing more than more is a lot more which is exactly what i get at embassy suites more space more downtime more family time more me time more me time more me time because the more and more i have the more i have to have more more room complimentary drinks free breakfast embassy suites hotels just simply well again they had some injuries and they were very very young i believe they were 12 and 16 last year were they not i'm trying to remember from last year uh, but i can check but bottom line is they expect to be very very good and you can see right now even uh, despite the fact that they struggled in the second half of that first quarter it, they've got some length. They've got again. They've got young players. But Glenn says by the time we get around to mid-January or into February, this team might be really, really dangerous. And again, this is a team that knocked off Tampa on this floor yeah. last year in the Sunshine State Conference tournament. Aliyah Abney will inbound just in front of us here. Anna Popovich coming into the lineup for the Spartans. Popovich with Sullivan picking up a second foul. Popovich. So Tom Jesse's going to deep is a 6-1 junior a transfer from elon university she is a native of england nelson dribbles to the right side popovich clears out ball tipped away but nudge came and got it oh. put it up no good ball is knocked out of bounds off of nudge dora usually finishes that shot when she gets that close to the rim so it's Popovich, number 11. And we can tell them apart a little bit. Dory Nudge, who looks very similar to her in <laughs> yeah, body they style. Really they do, they, they, they used to have the same ponytailed hair. Yeah. She, but Dory's got her hair up in the in the bun, the tight bun tonight. So we'll tell them apart. Popovich kicks the ball away. So. And a red shirt under her jersey. i got to make yeah. mental notes on all this. I know. Abney, Nudge, Popovich, Nelson, and Ingram on the floor for Tampa right now. Ball is inbounded to Harrison. She kicks out to Leah. Leah drives, kicks it out. Boy, they again, they move their body and the passes are very crisp. Ingram does a nice job after getting the rebound of protecting the basketball. I tell you, that's a nice rebound to get. That's almost like a team rebound because it hit the floor, meaning everybody did such a good job boxing out. Inside the nudge, the double team comes very quickly. Abney comes right back into nudge. Nudge, one dribble, step through move, and is foul. She'll through, shoot two free throws here. A little reset on the fouls for the second quarter, but a two-shot shooting foul anyway. Well, Rollins College, again, 6-2 and two on the year. There are only two losses. They have blown 17 and 12-point leads. And, in fact, they were outscored 23-12 by Embry-Riddle Wednesday night at home in the fourth quarter. They had won four in a row, so that winning streak came to a, an abrupt end. Nudge makes both this time, and it's a nine-point lead for Tampa, the Spartans' biggest. Newsom will sit down. They were 12 and 15 a year ago. I think I said 12 and 16, Rollins College. Thank you, Jack. You're very close. I was. I know Glenn <laughs> Wilkes was a little disappointed with that season, but the team being so young, it was sort of what you expected. Beautiful save and into the hands of Leah. They shouldn't have reset the shot clock on that, but a whistle and a foul after Nudge grabbed the rebound. 
Didn't hit the rim there. And they reset the shot clock. It did not matter. Nope. <laughs> I don't think Rollins realized it had been reset because they just right. kept playing with a little urgency. Nudge to Abney near side. Might have got away with a step and nice hits shot. the three. Aliyah Abney knocks one down. Just her third triple of yeah, the season. Yeah, not normally her shot. She was 2 of 11 prior to draining that one. Beautiful step to the basket. Nice fake. But no good. That was Paris, the freshman. Uh, Paris Sharp. She's from Plantation, Florida. She's averaging seven points, over four rebounds a game. Six-foot freshman out of American Heritage. She was the Florida 6A Player of the Year last year. Hmm. Talking about number 23 in the blue uniform here today of Rollins College. Bringing in some credentials similar to Malia Sullivan for the Spartans mm -hmm. from two years ago. Abney drives, throws it up, and is going to be going to the free throw line as well as the blocking foul is called on Jalen Harrison. That's their fourth already this quarter, so we're only seven and a half minutes, two and a half minutes into the quarter, seven and a half minutes to go, and they're one foul away from yeah. putting the Spartans at the line for two. They've been whistled for ten personal fouls. Tampa just two free throw good by Abney. Which goes back to what I was saying about the amount of free throws Tampa shoots exactly. versus their opponents. Tampa somehow is able to draw more fouls. And the second one, no good. Daniels is on the bench with three fouls already. They're she didn't start. No, Rosser and Newsom already have two. Tampa has two players who have committed fouls. I think I think I said they had only two. It was actually right. four. Two fouls for Wright Potter and two for Sullivan. Well, they'd been on 12 for a little while, but Harrison finally got him off that 12-point scoring total. So it was a 13-point lead, the largest of the game for Tampa. Nice drive wow. by Abney. Abney's been very aggressive since coming into the lineup. And Tom Jesse says that he would like to see her be a little more aggressive. So she is answering that call. She must have told he must have told her as well as you. Yeah, I think she, that, that might have been mentioned <laughs> yeah. in in the locker room. Might have. Wasn't just a secret, but for you. <laughs> no, he wasn't sharing anything with me. He hasn't told the player apparently. <laughs> Martinez Toro missed the long three and the rebound out of bounds. But Abney on a couple drives created some good space and knocked down a three. She's a good athlete. Mm -hmm. Ingram for three around, no good. Nudge got a hand on the ball and a whistle and a foul in the battle for the rebound, and I think it's going to be on Paris Sharp. And they are, as you say, shooting already on the fifth foul here at the 6:26 mark. This is where Glenn Wilkes might be having a little side conversation with the referees during timeouts. Nudge free throw, good. She's already up to eight points. Wright Ponder and Sullivan have six apiece. So does Abney. Well, the free throw line is making the difference in this one. Yes. Losing your footing, but not the dribble. Harrison <laughs> maintains possession. I thought it was Marcus Haynes there for a second. Pretty good. Three-point shot is off the iron. No good. Long rebound. Pluviosi. I know I went in the wayback machine on that one. You though. did. You did. <laughs> Pluviosi had hit her only three-point try prior to that. As far as in this game, as we mentioned, she hasn't been all that successful throughout the year. But Tampa has good. made 12 free throws, 12 more than Rollins. Yeah. Wow. Rollins still looking to convert his first free throw. Oh, nice. <laughs> wow. Popovich threaded the needle. It was one of those where Tom Jesse went, oh, no, don't. Yeah, yeah nice pass. <laughs> <laughs> and the basket by Abney. She now has eight points. 
Dodge leading the way with nine. The whistle on a foul. Harrison on a nice drive there. Took it to the hole. Got it. Got fouled. Jalen Harrison scored a career-high 21 points in the season opener against Puerto Rico Rio Piedras. Also had a season-high nine rebounds in that game. So a near double-double in the opener this year. In fact, at M the game against Embry-Riddle on Wednesday night, she missed a three-point try with nine seconds left that would have tied the game. Ingram shoots a three. And and she will have a chance for a four-point play. You know, that one, she was pressured more than any of her first two shots, and she still knocked it down. Obviously, she was pressured because she got fouled and hit it. The good thing is she's not afraid. She knows she's a good shooter. It's just working through it right now. And the foul on Harrison, her second. She will sit down. 18-point lead. Ingrams makes the four-point play. You don't get a lot of chances at those, so you always want to make that free throw. Yes. And it's a 19-point advantage. Tampa really playing I'm tough. I'm very surprised. Oh, absolutely. Nice move off the dribble. No good. Rebound hauled in by Pluviosi. Shot blocked. Well, we talked about it in previous broadcasts, but Tampa has length with Wright Ponder on the bench even. They still have two six-footers out there. Popovich and Nudge. Nudge with the ball now. I mean, two things to look at so far. Free throws, and Rollins has taken nine more shots than Tampa, but made three less. Five seconds to shoot. Nelson, oh, almost broke her ankles. What a pass to Ingram. Oh, doesn't get the assist, however. Oh, too bad. Pretty play by Chris Nelson. Boy, that's great court vision. You see why she's a co-captain. Shot right there by Garcia is no good. Long rebound. Good save. They reset the shot clock at 20. Martinez Toro threads the needle inside. Out it comes. And a whistle and a foul. That's going to be an offensive foul on the drive. Pluviosi threw out her left arm to clear a little space. And it's, it's too bad because I think it might have been a blocking foul otherwise. <laughs> but uh, when she threw that arm out, it yep. changed my perception yes. of the call at least. Pluviosi picking up her second foul. 13th team foul in the game. Tampa has a total of five. Timeout on the... Coach or assistant coach of, of uh, Nova Southeastern. Yeah, first of all, very flattered that everybody would come. Thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions before we move on? Do you remember the girl wearing the Go Phil shirt following you around? Yeah. It's me. It's I do. been me on several occasions. I started papering my cubicle with pictures of you. You, you have know? a picture of the shrine? I mean, I'd love to see it. I've got a mental <laughs> picture of it. And it I do too. pretty weird. Yeah. yeah, a little bit. I believe that I have a happy marriage because of you, because sometimes I do a little substitution, you know, just mentally. Whoa. But <laughs> anyway, Mike, let's... Uh, <laughs> One of them, I know. Right, right. And I think um, Pender was the other. Um, I, I can't remember. I'll have to go back. But anyway, bottom line is they they are playing better. I think so. But there there were some some people I know that were wondering how many games is the Tampa men's team going to win. Well, now they look like you know what they they're, they're not going to be bad. They're going to be competitive and. Obviously, Pat Bacon has returned to form and but leading a score. you got to take the competitive, though, and turn it into victories. Yes, though. exactly. Moral victories don't go in the win column. Tampa with a chance to make it a 20-point lead. Under four minutes left in the second quarter. Ingram, they're running it. Abney, who's looked good in this game, got it inside. High-low. No, oh, nice backdoor pass. cut. Nudge on the back door and a nice bounce pass. And that was exactly the way that was drawn up in the timeout, don't you think? Yep. Yeah, Popovich knew exactly what was happening. She just laid it out there. She knew Nudge was going to be coming. 
21 point lead for Tampa. Wow. Nice move and a good shot by Martinez Toro. She's a 42% three point shooter. After the make here, it looked like the Rollins players forgot they were going to do the full court press on makes. Well, they it haven't been made that many. <laughs> it had been yeah. a while. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Spartans, though, have been well prepared for that today. It is interesting. Apparently, Chris Nelson got bumped a little bit. I think Maya Justo is going to come in. Chris returning from injury. There Ingram. you go. Ingram with a nice, strong move to the basket. Julie Ingram with six points now. Again, a 21-point lead. Abney with pretty good defense all the way to the basket. The shot off the iron, no good by Leah. Rebound, Nudge. Here comes Tampa again. That's Nudge's 11th rebound, by the way. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> 11 I points. She's got a double-double yeah, right now. Yeah. She's feeling good. <laughs> She forced that pass, however, and was picked off by the freshman Garcia, who just stepped into the passing lane. Good idea, but good Popovich steal. comes back. You know, Popovich and Abney are two players who Tom Jesse's really counting off off the bench, yeah. counting on off the bench, and as well as Maya Justo when Chris Nelson needs a break. And today, so, so far, both have played well. Exactly. And, and I think that it may have been discussed at some point, we need you to to play with confidence. There's Abney launching a three. No good. Rebound hauled in. That was Sharp that hauled in that rebound. Sharp and Garcia. Two six-footers plus two good-looking freshmen. Drive by Leah. Kicks it out. The shot no good by Garcia. Rebound, however, picked up and thrown up and in by Leah. Rachel Leah. <laughs> Leah with four points now. She had missed five of her first six shots. A minute and 15 seconds left here in this second quarter. And I thought Nelson got away with a carry, but she's going to be called for a foul. The defender is called for the foul more specifically. And Nelson goes to the line again, shooting two because they are over the limit. That's the 16th foul of this quarter. Nelson to the line. She's been to the line only eight times this season. And she's... Only her fourth game, though. Yeah, exactly. A nice quality 17. She has a trem record. tremendous form. Just yeah. standing at the line. Nothing but wrist. And I say that, and of course, the miss. And that's her first miss of the season. So <laughs> I am totally the jinx guy today. She's 9 out of 10 on the year after that. Oh, launched the lefty Jalen Harrison. Fires in a three. Here comes that full court pressure again. And as you say, Tampa's ready for it. Terry Battle is in the game for Tampa right now. The 6'1 junior out of Chicago. Simeon Academy. Played at Bowling Green a couple of years. Did not play very much, but she is on the floor. We did not see her the first time. Oh, good move by Abney. Abney's really looking strong today. She's in double figures with 10 points already. Shot clock is off. Harrison will orchestrate the offense as it hits about 10 seconds or so. When I have time for a rebound. Look at that double team. Good show right there by Terry Battle. Whistle and a foul. And I think it's going to be two free throws coming up. The foul on Popovich. Well, Anna Popovich has looked very good here in her first half of this game. Very aggressive. Again, had seemed to have lost a little bit of confidence. And I know that 
Tom Jesse feels like she could be a real, real attribute to this team. Justo checked into the scorer's table at about the two-minute mark. Yeah, and gets this is the first the, stoppage of play. Gets in at the <laughs> six-second mark. Should mention, uh, associate head coach Caitlin Mitrick in her eighth year at UT. First year as the associate head coach. That's a free throw good. Bell Bistro, graduate assistant on the bench as well for UT. Can the Spartans get a shot? Justo knows there's about no time left, and she lifts. Oh, she, she turned okay. her ankle. And let's hope it's just an ankle yeah. and not a knee. It's bad regardless. She's going to and try she to. She twisted it. Those usually. Freak alert. Jalen. Not like a slips into baby talk when he's feeling insecure kind of freak. Not even a little bit. Jalen's a freak about hand slicing all natural meats for every Jimmy John sandwich he makes. Look at his unfettered joy. And not just for ham. You should see him with Capicola. Thank you, Jalen. Your meat freakiness means better sandwiches for all. Freaky fresh, freaky fast, Jimmy John's freaky ass. Leading score, Dory Nudge, 11 points. It's not about any one thing. It's about how everything comes together. How it all connects. People. Ideas. Resources. Community. Everything. Quality of life services. That's what we do. Sodexo. And for Martinez Toro. Doubletree by Hilton, we believe in nice. Not your okay, fine, just being polite kind of nice, but a genuine nice. The kind that's contagious, that you can't help but take with you. The kind of nice you want to share with others. But don't take our word for it. Come for a stay and help us prove nice travels. Book at Doubletree.com. 122 points a game, I know. even though you held him to 75. Or I know. 70. We're going away! Take it off of me! For 42 minutes, he's been trying to bring an entire stadium to its feet. You missed it, buddy. Why does he do it? For glory? Notoriety? We don't know. Frankly, we don't need to know. But much like this hero, Courtyard is all about the game. Snacks, yeah, man, eat it up, and we're going to burn it off doing the... hurt us, but we definitely came out. They were averaging 85. We held... We're more than just $7.99 large two-topping pizza delivered. Hey, B, is this it? Watch me. Watch me. We're an end zone dance at your doorstep. No one out here. More efficient, increase that field goal percentage, and uh... At Jimmy John's, we're freaks about best-in-class ingredients. So it's no wonder we announced our new nine-grain wheat sub in the middle of a wheat field. When you've got news this big, it's not enough to just add it to the menu. Where's the freak at in that? To celebrate a new sandwich with a taste so inspired, we introduced it in the place that inspired it. 
the new Jimmy John's Nine Grain Wheat Socket. Now available at a Jimmy John's. Much, much, much closer to here. Wheat yet? Head manager Tim Russo, <laughs> who works out with Pac. What do you get when you take your favorite food and stuff it inside a pocket of homemade dough? Cooked perfectly until golden brown. It's a mouth-watering empanada from Mr. Empanada. No one makes a better empanada. Take Ted Webb's word for it. Almost as good as my mom used to make. Check out our website for a location near you. Mr. Empanada. Honestly, not sure. Yeah, it depends on the game. We need to make shots. Uh, I chose Rollins because the Spanish Mediterranean architecture is just beautiful. The weather's great. We're in uh, central Florida. We're right on Lake Virginia, and I couldn't turn any of that down. Rollins gave me that ability and that foundation that I needed to go into the world, and I think that I wouldn't have got that experience anywhere else. This is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams. Discover your talents. Get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. said that less is more is more or less mathematically challenged. Less isn't more, it's less. And the only thing more than more is a lot more, which is exactly what I get at Embassy Suites. More space. More downtime. More family time. More me time. More me time. More me time. Because the more and more I have, the more I have to have more. More room, complimentary drinks, free breakfast, Embassy Suites Hotels.
Yeah, first of all, very flattered that everybody would come. Thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions before we move on? Do you remember the girl wearing the gold fill shirt following you around? Yeah. It's me. I it's do. been me on several occasions. I started papering my cubicle with pictures of you. You, you have know? a picture of the shrine? I mean, I'd love to see it. I've got a mental picture of it, and it I seems do too. pretty weird. Yeah. yeah, a little bit. I believe that I have a happy marriage because of you, because sometimes I do a little substitution, you know, just mentally. Whoa. But <laughs> anyway, Mike, <laughs> let's... Uh, <laughs> Freak alert, Jalen. Not like a slips into baby talk when he's feeling insecure kind of freak. Not even a whittle bit. Jalen's a freak about hand slicing all natural meats for every Jimmy John sandwich he makes. Look at his unfettered joy. And not just for ham. You should see him with capicola. Thank you, Jalen. Your meat freakiness means better sandwiches for all. Freaky fresh, freaky fast, Jimmy John's freak yeah. It's not about any one thing. It's about how everything comes together, how it all connects. People, ideas, resources, community, everything. Quality of life services. That's what we do. Sodexo. At Doubletree by Hilton, we believe in nice. Not your okay, fine, just being polite kind of nice, but a genuine nice. The kind that's contagious, that you can't help but take with you. The kind of nice you want to share with others. But don't take our word for it. Come for a stay and help us prove nice travels. Book at Doubletree.com. Two minutes he's been trying to bring an entire stadium to its feet. Right, you missed it, buddy. Why does he do it? For glory? Notoriety? We don't know. Frankly, we don't need to know. But much like this hero, Courtyard is all about the game. Hey, there's my guy. Yes. Go. Snacks? Yeah, man. Eat it up, and we're gonna burn it off doing the We're more than just $7.99 large two-topping pizza delivery. Hey, B, is this it? Watch me. Watch me. We're an end zone dance at your doorstep. No one out here. Nowadays, more and more people are on the go. We are all busy with work and family. Clean Eats has a solution. At every Clean Eats location, we have grab-and-go coolers that are packed full of freshly made breakfast, lunch, and dinner meals. Whether you are a soccer mom, business person, athlete, or just someone that does not have time to prepare your own meals, Clean Eats has you covered. Our grab-and-go cooler will always have a wide selection of meals to satisfy you. Each to-go meal is priced under $7. With three fouls. Daniels also with three. She only played five minutes, as you said. She didn't start. Five minutes, three fouls. Tampa now 15 of 18 from the line. 
and Rollins is two of five. And it's not like the whistles have been one-sided, you know. It, it's basically been Tampa, the more aggressive team, getting the calls by going strong to the basket. Rollins has tended to be shooting jumpers, and I think part of it is you got those two six-foot players down there from Tampa that are they're kind of intimidating if you're driving to the hoop. Sullivan with a near steal. And a collision, a near collision. Yes, I'll tell you what, <laughs> a near collision. Robert Siegel almost lost his uh, laptop and, and his seat. Headphones, yeah. <laughs> everything. He was bailing out. He was not proud. No. He was leaving. Harrison, spin move, around Nelson, no good. Just right. one fall. Yeah, right ponder, a rebound. Her fifth. Nudge had 11 rebounds in the first half. Just an And 11 points. Yeah, incredible performance. Eight more assists. She's got a triple-double. Beautiful pass inside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beautiful pass inside by Nelson. Uh, right ponder couldn't finish, however. Good transition defense by Tampa. And a I had a double-double in high school. I missed 10 shots and had 10 turnovers. Well, I, I'm sure your parents were proud. <laughs> I think it was senior night. <laughs> Full-court pressure coming up here as Nelson will inbound after the turnover by Rollins College. Only the third turnover for Rollins. Tampa has only three. So, again, it's been a pretty well-played game. Right. Ten. Shot clock, I think. Oh, yeah. The shot clock had not started, so they're going to run it down a bit. It's good we got into the second half before we had that issue. Yep. This happens from time to time. <laughs> Stopped it with 22 seconds to go. And here comes Nudge, thinking about a three, but they'll zip it around. Ingram skip pass from Sullivan. Found her open, oh, and around boy, and out it goes. so close. Good rebound by Pluviosi as Ingram nearly came and got her own board. There's a long three-pointer, and it's a long rebound. Hauled in by Pluviosi. Rosser with it now. He is back to Harrison. Harrison skips it outside. That three-point shot by nice. Leah is good. 44-28 after the made, and here comes the full-court pressure. And Nelson has to get it in, just does. And Sullivan, ahead of the pack, driving strong to the basket. Boy, what a move that was. Strong to the basket by Malia Sullivan. There's the athleticism Yeah, you won't see about. too many women in college basketball with that kind of a ability to drive to the basket. Got a great skill set. Just needs experience. Played as a freshman last year, but had the ups and downs that you will have when you're transitioning from the high school to college basketball. Sullivan with eight points now. Make it nine. Interestingly, no rebounds, no assists. Basically, I'm here to defend and score. That's all she's thinking. <laughs> Forty-seven, twenty-eight. I love watching that point guard battle. That's, yeah. that's a real good battle between Nelson and Harrison. And they switch up here. And now it's going to be Martinez Toro defending Nelson. Here comes the high screen. Nelson stops on the drive and is fouled. She could have gone all the way for the basket. She pulled up, though. So 6.43 left here in the third quarter. Tampa with a chance to make it a 20-point lead again. Largest lead in the game is 21. Sharp back in the lineup for Rollins. Mm -hmm. And sitting down is Pluviosi. The foul was on Martinez Toro, her first. And Nelson misses a free throw. She's missed her last two. Second free throw by Nelson is good. Twenty-one. 
20-point lead for Tampa. I think if you're Glenn Wilkes, you're just telling your team, hey, just keep playing. Let's run the offense. Let's find some shots. Knock them down. We've had some good looks. No good. Right ponder. Tough rebound defensively. That's her seventh. Chris Nelson. Oh, what a nice hesitation move. Largest lead of the game for the Spartans. Chris Nelson with a beautiful finish. She's got six points. That's what now. I thought she was going to do the last time down the floor when she got fouled. And foul a whistle on and a foul on Nelson. The shot was put up there by Leah. Nelson came running by and caught her on the arm. First team foul of the quarter. Leah to the line to shoot two. Makes the first. She's now 10 out of 13 on the year, 10 out of 14. Ball tipped up and around. Good hustle. Nice rebound. Hauled in by Paris Sharp. The freshman went and got it. Leah drives and rolls it in. So it turns out to be a three-point possession. And just like that, a little pep in the step of the Rollins Tars. They pull it up, full court pressure again. And now a timeout called by Tom Jesse. He did not want to turn over there. And it was starting to get late in the count. I think it was at four when Tom Jesse said, well, we better get a timeout here. Stemming whatever momentum Rollins might have had there after scoring the last three points. 50-31, timeout on the floor, 537 left. Uh, I chose Rollins because the Spanish Mediterranean architecture is just beautiful. The weather's great. We're in uh, central Florida. We're right on Lake Virginia, and I couldn't turn any of that down. Rollins gave me that ability and that foundation that I needed to go into the world, and I think that I wouldn't have got that experience anywhere else. Coach of the first 25 years. This is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams. Discover your talents. Get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. Rollins in a season 24 times. 24 20 win seasons. That's how you get up over 700, I guess. Yeah. The interesting Consistency. thing. Yeah. Eddie Cole, his longtime assistant, 29th season is his assistant there on the bench. I was told Eddie Cole is the mayor of Eatonville, Florida. Okay. So You're on he's got another job. Yeah. <laughs> that one sounds a little Which more. Which one has more pressure? I, I was going to say. More pressure, more prestige, I guess. They're both pretty cool. Probably the mayor has more pressure because you're the number one You're guy. the guy, yeah. yeah. He can always defer to Glenn here. Inside the right ponder. There she scores with the left hand. That's what has really impressed me about her. I thought she was a left-handed player the first few ga the first game, yeah. first half. All of a sudden, then she's shooting free throws with her right hand. I go, wow. She is ambidextrous, it would appear. Certainly good with either hand. Beautiful spin move by Sharp is no good. 21-point lead. Nelson's launching a three, and I she drains it. it. <laughs> she doesn't look for it often. Biggest she, lead of the she's game added again. to her uh, skill set. She really has. She worked on it over the summer. Now she's shooting over 50% from deep. That's eight out of 15 from downtown. What a nice move that was, but no good. And right ponder pulls down the board. Sullivan says, I can take this to the rack. Does and scores. Of I think it's getting out of hand now. 57 to 31, 26 point lead. I would imagine Tom Jesse's halftime talk referenced don't don't give up the gas because if you remember somebody trailed by 18 on Wednesday night. <laughs> yeah. In the third quarter. Three point shot no good there by Leah. Rebound again into the hands of 
the red jerseyed Spartans. Anna Popovich will be coming back in at the next dead ball. A little scoop, no good. Right ponder, offensive rebound scores, 59 to 31. Right ponder now with 10 points and nine rebounds. She's headed to that double double that was predicted yep. by somebody. You. That yeah, was me, yeah. <laughs> and the shot, no there good. Go. There's there the there double double. Tenth rebound of the game. Two players with double doubles. Nudge with 13 points, 13 boards. And again, each of them needs only eight more assists for the <laughs> triple you double. You keep a track of that for me, <laughs> would you? And they're going to call a foul as Ingram with a nice pump fake. Drew the contact from Rosser as she drove by her. And substitutions, wholesale substitutions yeah. on the part of Glenn Wilkes. The hockey line change there. Meanwhile, Popovich will come. Tampa a two-point lead. Eckerd, though, was the last win yes. that Tampa had prior to this game on Wednesday night. They won on a basket literally at the at buzzer, buzzer by Nudge. And then they score again with eight-tenths of a second at Eckerd to pull out a win there. So they've had some thrills. They probably don't mind being up by 28 points right here. Rebound is hauled in by Rachel Jablonski, number 11. It is Martinez Toro with the ball now. He gives it up to Denise Daniels. Back in, playing with three fouls. Here's a whistle and a foul. And it's a nice drive by Garcia. She drew contact on Julia Ingram, who tried to draw a charge, but just didn't get there in time. Yep. You know, Ingram just missed a three down at the other end, but I like the fact that you mentioned Tom Jesse knows she's going through a tough shooting time, but he's letting her shoot, yeah. letting her stay in. Because she will come around, and it'll be deadly. Long three-pointer is drained by Yoka Tassin. Yoka Tassin, a sophomore from Ormond Beach. 5'7", sophomore. Last year, totaled 31 points. So just a part-time player as a, her freshman season. But boy, she showed uh, that she can launch it from deep. Sullivan all the way to the basket. Boy, has she looked to score today. She's got 13 tied for game scoring honors. She's five for five from the field, three for three from the line. Pass knocked away by Popovich. They tried to get it into Garcia, posted up on the low block. Men's game coming up around 4 o'clock. Jack Ike will have the call of that one. I'll handle the Getting analysis prepared. duties. You ready? Yep. If you've waited till now to get prepared, we're in trouble. <laughs> I did my homework uh, yesterday. Look at Sullivan. Rip that ball morning. down. First rebound of the game for Sullivan. But she has played some really good defense out there today as well as scoring. 18 very solid minutes up by the starter, Sullivan, and now the shot no good. Daniels pulled down the rebound. Here's Martinez Toro. Found Garcia. Shot no good. Nudge had it. Stolen away, though, by Jablonski, but then the Spartans get it back. Heard some skin slap there, but nothing called. Sullivan 
Gives it up. There we go. There you go. Julie Ingram knocks it down. Ingram gives it a 30-point lead for Tampa, largest of the game. Two-pointer no good. Boy, nice offensive rebound. Sullivan fell to the floor. This basket by Daniels. That's her first bucket, if I'm not mistaken. Or by, uh, I'm sorry, it was Tossant that scored that. Tossant with her first two. Second field goal, I should say. Five points for Tossant. She had knocked down that three a moment ago. 24 seconds left in the third. Tampa leading, trying to improve to... Four, four and three. And three. And three and oh in the conference. Yeah. One of only two teams still undefeated in the Sunshine State Conference. Florida Southern being the other. They are a half game ahead at the start of the day, three and oh. Spartans wow. get a week off and then we'll be at St. Leo next Saturday for night games on a Saturday. Free throw good by Nudge. She now has 14, make it 15. And Aliyah Abney coming in for Dory. That might be all we see of Dory Nudge Very today. Very well could be. With a 30-point lead in fourth quarter to play. 15 points, 11 from the line. Mm. Good ball movement. Martinez Toro shoots a three and drains it. Yari Martinez Toro knocked down the triple. Can Tampa get a shot? Oh, whistle and a foul, and it's going to be two free throws for Chris Nelson. With 3.9 seconds left, she's fouled coming across the half court stripe. Two free throws coming for Nelson. She's two of four. Made her first, missed the next two, made the last one, and that one. I think Glenn Wilkes has kind of resigned himself to it's just been one of those days. It would appear so. He's coached enough to know. Yeah. And tons of credit for Tampa. They came out and did what they really hoped to do. It took a few minutes to get it going. Time runs out here in the quarter. But once Tampa started to pull away, it's they've never looked back. The Spartans have definitely had things going their way. It's not about any one thing. It's about how everything comes together, how it all connects. People, ideas, resources, community, everything. Quality of life services. That's what we do. Sodexo has made six more baskets at this point. Well. Give it a few minutes and we'll see some substitutions. I would think so. To start the quarter, it is Ingram, Abney, Sullivan, Nelson, and Popovich. Again, all regulars in the rotation. Harrison starts the quarter, as does Tassant. As Sullivan drives right to the rim and scores. 70 to 39, the score. Six for six. Rosser on the floor as well. Leah Garcia. <laughs> That's the five. Good drive. Yep. Leah with another basket. She's the leading scorer for the Tars. She's got a dozen now. The only player in double figure scoring. Harrison is the leading scorer on the season at 12 points. Leah averaging 7.4, so she's above her average for the season. 
Abney grab it. It'll be a held ball, and the ball will go to Rollins in this situation. I believe. I think one thing, another thing interesting about uh, today's game is when Chris Nelson was hurt, Maya Justo really stepped up and did a nice job. But she's yeah. a freshman. And so far in this game, she's gotten six seconds of playing time <laughs> as Tom Jesse really likes what Chris Nelson is doing. Oh, absolutely. Yep. And again, you know, Nelson missing three games. He's probably wanting to get her into game yep. shape again. Yep. Justo's going to probably be in in a few minutes, and she'll get a few more minutes in this game. Tossin, nice drive to the basket off the glass and down. She's showing me something here, yeah. the sophomore from Orman Beach. Spruce Creek High School played 20 games last year. She has a season high, seven points as a matter of fact. Her career high is eight. She had eight in the game last season. Abney gives it to Ingram. Eight and a half to play. And oh. whistle, is blocking foul called, an in, inadvertent yeah. contact there. Kind of went down like bowling. Let's see if there. Popovich is okay. She's kind of slow getting up. She went down as well. So Tampa will inbound. The foul on the drive. First team foul for either team here in the fourth quarter. Probably the whistles will be put away unless it's <laughs> an obvious foul situation. Might have a little moisture on the floor after there were a few bodies down there moments ago. Four, make that five Spartans in double figures today. Nudge and Sullivan with 15 apiece. Nelson with 11 and 10 for both Abney and Wright Ponder. So if Ingram can pick up another point and become the sixth in double digits... That's pretty and impressive. And everyone who scored for Tampa would be in double digits. Wow. Justo and Popovich have not scored, Nelson. but have played. Sullivan steps through, throws it up, and they're going to call travel. Step through. Yeah. Stepped through and <laughs> often. <laughs> Not quite like LeBron James the other night. Oh, did, did you, you see, see that? that? I did see that. Yeah. Dribbles across the half court line, holds the ball, the ball and takes three or four takes steps. Takes three or four steps and then dr keeps his dribble, and yeah. there's no whistle. Yeah. And there was also, I don't know if you saw this, there was a second video of the, him doing that a few years ago. Really? Uh, exactly the same thing, but he was in the backcourt. He was in. They inbounded to him. And he's standing there at the other free throw line, the far end of the floor, and he just starts walking down the floor. He took three or four steps and then dribbled. It's like with no whistle. That's yeah. the, that's the thing. Yeah. You, you can do that, but usually they're going to call travel. <laughs> yes, you can, unless you're as, LeBron, apparently. You take as many steps as you want normally. Yeah, that's one of my problems with the NBA. Is come on, let's make calls no matter who the player is. Now, I do have to say there was a thing about LeBron cheering his team on late in a game, and he took off his shoes and was in his socks, and I just thought the broadcaster should have just ate, eaten their microphones on that one. Yeah. If, if he, He's two minutes or whatever left in the game. They're way ahead. He took his shoes off. He cheers his team on. That's fine. <laughs> First free throw by Harrison is good. And I can't remember who the broadcasters were. New Orleans? Hmm. It was the op opposition team, was the it? opponents. Oh, okay. Both free throws good by Harrison. They, they complained he was being disrespectful for being uh, cheering his team on without his shoes on. Uh. And he, you know, the thing is, he probably gave them to a young fan. He did, as he he actually, he out. did. Yeah, he so actually I, had already done that. Yeah. <laughs> and he wasn't going to get back in the game. Ingram. Hit it. Oh, Julia, we need the double digit. pass to Nelson. Nelson keeps her dribble on top to Abney. Abney says, I've been going to the hoop in this game. Shot no good. What's on a offensive oh. foul? by Rosser in the backcourt. Man. A little frustration, I think. Fifth foul on Rosser. So she will have to sit down. Tough game for Rosser. Five fouls in 13 minutes. No points, two missed shots, three rebounds total. 
Len Wilkes taking a moment to before making a substitution. <laughs> and he will send in Paris Sharp once again. And Coach Wilkes saying, no need for foul. I think I read his lips saying that's a bad foul. <laughs> yep. You know. Here. Shoot. Ingram. A little zone defense. Nelson for three. Yes. Nice. Chris good, Nelson. Good shot. All that hard work in the summer has paid off. She is now a three-point shooter. Well, you mentioned she has great form from the free throw line, yeah. and it carries over. Yeah, Other than she's jumping. That's a long two. No good. Rebound by Popovich. Ingram. Nelson and Sullivan, the only starters still on the floor. Three starters on the floor. Oh, look at Abney. Keep the ball and score. You expect the handoff as a defender, and it just didn't come. Nope. And Abney knocked down the baseline shot. She's got a dozen. Whistle on a foul on Abney on the drive. Third team foul. And here comes... Maya Justo into the game. Chris Nelson is probably done at this point yeah. after draining that last three-pointer. Big smile. She's yeah. always happy. You know that? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Nothing to be sad about. 14 no. points and five assists for Chris Nelson today. A she makes both, both of her three-point shots. Again, one of the co-captains. Nice to have her back and healthy, it would appear. Driving right. to the basket is Garcia. She's going to be tough over the next yeah. three years. She's going to get a little polish in her game. Yeah. She's going to be a tough tough out. The freshman from Spain with a pretty move to the hoop. Six minutes left. Justo gets to Sullivan. Sullivan, see if they can find Ingram so she can get into yeah. the whole Yeah, oh, come on. She needs to talk to us. She's, she's very unselfish. Sullivan oh, scores my. and has a chance for a three-point play. She's seven of seven from the field. 17 points. Boy, we would have a, a great choice of stars all six, of the game. Six of them over, <laughs> yeah, it no, score. No, we would have to share, <laughs> We'd have to incorporate some mics. Uh, maybe, maybe just M Malia Sullivan today. I mean, she's a perfect four of four from the line, seven of seven. But obviously, with Wright Ponder and Nudge both having double doubles, I mean, it's no problem. We did have Dory the first game, yeah, so we can get Wright Ponder. We could spread the wealth. Why don't we? Why don't we drop to Malia? Okay. If she, Malia. Yeah, Malia. Okay, Sullivan. Yeah. yeah, let's let's. Talk the leading scorer now. Yeah. 18 points for her. There's a three-pointer. That looked good, and it is. Martinez Toro lined up where we could see that was right on line all the way. That's been their, their one bright spot today is that they have hit the three. Good ball handling. Beating the press that time by Sullivan. Justo picked up by Martinez Toro. Obviously the more experienced. I asked Glenn Wilkes, what do you think of the freshman? There's a three-pointer by Popovich, no good. I said, what do you think of Maya Justo? And he, uh, I said, do you, have you seen much of her? He goes, oh, I've been watching her for five years. I know all about her. She's a Florida kid. Yeah. She's from Naples, Gulf Coast High School, and Glenn Wilkes knew all about Maya Justo. He didn't like her. Deep There's water. another long three. No good. And a push in the back, I think. Ingram, maybe. Yeah. And we have a timeout at the 444 mark with Tampa leading by 28, 78 to 50. The Spartans will be playing at St. Leo next Saturday. That is their next game, so they're right back at it. It's a night game, though. It's 5.30 and 7.30 instead of the 2 and 4. That's, yeah, that's normal interesting, isn't it? on Saturday. Yeah. Rollins, meantime, will be playing at Nova Southeastern. So, boy, you talk about... 
Yeah, first of all, very flattered that everybody would come. Thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions before we move on? Do you remember the girl wearing the gold fill shirt following you around? Yeah. It's me. I it's do. been me on several occasions. I started papering my cubicle with pictures of you. You, you have know? a picture of the shrine? I mean, I'd love to see it. I've got a mental <laughs> picture of it. And it I do too. pretty weird. Yeah. yeah, a little bit. I believe that I have a happy marriage because of you, because sometimes I do a little substitution, you know, just mentally. Whoa. But <laughs> anyway, Mike, <laughs> let's. Uh, <laughs> Rollins is going to suffer its third loss of the season and fall to 0-2 in the Sunshine State Conference, but I can see some good things ahead for this team. Certainly Garcia, and a freshman. Tossant, who's come off the bench and played pretty well today. A sophomore, Paris Sharp, six-foot freshman. And Garcia, by the way, 6'2". So, I mean, you've got a couple of six-footers, possible twin towers for years to come here. Inside it goes. A nice move in the nice low post move by Paris Sharp. Just yep. talked about her. No give up in the Rollins team. They pick up full court again. And Justo threw an arm out, but it, the foul is called on, Mar on uh, Harrison. Harrison picks up her third foul. Nice job by Aaliyah Abney there as Justo wasn't real thrilled about how she got fouled there. Yeah. And she was kind of walking toward Harrison and Abney goes, Maya. A, a good save there by Justo as that ball was about to be intercepted and Justo couldn't corral it herself but Hammered tapped it, back, it to a teammate. Yeah. And I think that's the fifth team foul, is it not? I think they're shooting free throws here. Yes, indeed. And to the line goes Terry Battle. Battle, 6'1 junior out of Simeon Academy that in Chicago. A powerhouse boys oh, school. For years, it has been incredible. I'm curious uh, what the last name Battle, though. Kenny Battle, big player at the yeah. University of Illinois, was a Chicago area player. You wonder if Terry's any relation. That's what it wasn't. Your, your it wasn't question. in the bio, so I, yeah. you'd think they'd have mentioned it if it was a fact. Battle with her first points of the season in this her third game on the court. There's the freshman. Ooh, looked like a free throw, but yeah. sharp missed to the left, wide left. Under four to play. Carrying that basketball. Justo gives it up. Popovich. Here's Ing Ingram. Kicks it out. I don't think Julie is going to no, get the double figure shoot. score. She's she too unselfish to. today. Yeah. Boy, Abney with a tough shot. How did that go? She's got 14 off the bench in 17 minutes. And another 30 point lead. The largest of the game was 31. Timeout called by Glenn Wilkes as he, he wants says to get he a. Just wants to get the subs in. Yep. Otherwise, keep going. We see Chandler Hall, a 5'11 senior, is into the game along with Kylie Grigos, a 5'5 sophomore out of Fort Lauderdale. Samantha Matthews coming in for Julia Ingram. She is a freshman from Charlestown, Indiana. And that three-point shot is drained. Harrison knocked it down. 82-55. Matthews knocked down a three in the last game against Nova, right? Wasn't that the game? Oh, I, mean, I think you're right. Or maybe an earlier game. That might have been in one of the first games of the yeah. year, if I'm not mistaken. Strong move to the basket. Battle corralled it. And and what do we have here? A 30 second timeout and substitution. I see that. Okay. And Aaron Antosh, I believe, is, is checking in. Nope, check that. I'm sorry. It is Aubrey Clapsaddle has checked in. Clapsaddle, a freshman, 5'8 guard out of Murphy, North Carolina. She's a walk on. I tell you, you give you give walk-ons a lot of credit. You're still yeah. you're going to games and you're going to every practice. You don't get a lot of playing time, but to Carly, their credit, Carly Cawley also in 14, yep, number 14, another freshman out oh. of Lincoln University, Pennsylvania. Oh. <laughs> Shot no good. Bench Boy. wanted to wanted that one to fall. Yeah, the bench, which is now the starters, yeah. all wanted that one to go. Push. 
Whistle and a foul. So yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's some Terry Battle, Samantha Matthews, Carly Cauley, Maya Justo, and Aubrey Clapsaddle. That's your five out there for Tampa. And the free throw is made by Paris Sharp. Harrison, the leading scorer for Rollins in this game. She's made three from beyond the arc. 15 points for her, 12 for Leah. They are the two in double figure scoring for Rollins. Full court pressure, Maya Justo. Maya felt like she was pressured in the back, pushed in the back a little bit, but you know, again, the whistles are not going to be blown here in the late going, and that's not a criticism of the official. There wasn't much contact there. Maya's got to understand the situation, that she's not going to get a whistle just dribbling up the floor when, it's, when she's not knocked to the floor, basically. <laughs> Gets it inside, and good defense right there, I think, by Chandler Hall. I think she blocked the shot. This is Martinez Toro. Dribble off the drive. She shoots no good. Nice rebound by Samantha Matthews, the 5'7 freshman. Scored over 1,400 points in her high school career. She is a shooter. McDonald's All-American candidate. Yeah, she can catch and shoot. Oh, I'm surprised it didn't go up right there. Here's a three-pointer. It's good! Aubrey Clapsaddle, the freshman from Murphy, North Carolina. Smiling. <laughs> Clapsaddle seeing her first playing time today, and she had just drained it. She'll feel good about that one. Inside, the basket is scored, and free throws coming as well. For Paris Sharp. Foul is going to be on Carly Cauley. You know, clap saddle again, a walk on, but she scored over, she scored 1,000 career points exactly <laughs> in her high school career. Three point play is. Which means she's, she knows how to play. Yeah. Got a little offensive game. Look like she can shoot. 25-point lead with a minute to go. Oh, get it out of here. Indeed. Out on top it goes. This is Matthews for three. Oh. Around and out. She get a point and a half for that. <laughs> Rollins. The shot is long. Maya Justo the rebound. Shot clock is off. Final 25 seconds. Interesting. That's the first... A stat of any kind other than minutes played for Justo. She's played over six minutes now. No points, no rebounds, and now her one rebound and no assist. And the clock ticks down, and this is going to be your final score. 85-60 as Justo dribbles out the time, and the Spartans improve to 2-0 in Sunshine State Conference play. The Spartans have two, four, five players in double-figure scoring. I mentioned Harrison and Leah leading the way. The only two players in double-figure scoring for Rollins. For Tampa, Malia along with three rebounds, three assists. Three points for Clapsaddle, two points for Battle, 
And uh, one of those good games where everybody feels good about getting into it and uh, getting to play, and everybody contributed today. Malia Sullivan putting on the headset here. We'll talk to her very briefly and let her get in to celebrate with her teammates. But again, a game high, 18 points, 7 of 7 shooting from the field, and a perfect 4 of 4 from the line, I guess. Whoever said that less is more is more or less mathematically challenged. Less isn't more, it's less. And the only thing more than more is a lot more, which is exactly what I get at Embassy Suites. More space. More downtime. More family time. More me time. More me time. More me time. Because the more and more I have, the more I have to have more. More room, complimentary drinks, free breakfast, Embassy Suites Hotels. Freshman bigs look like they're going to be, you know, come Fe February or whatever when you play them again, they might be a little bit yeah. even tougher. Uh, yeah, they'll be, be they'll be better. So they'll you better. guys uh, still undefeated in the conference, which yes, is sir. a very, very good thing. Yes, sir, Obviously, yeah. you know, um, you had that one stretch where you had a couple of losses, but this team picked to win the Sunshine State Conference. You're one of only two teams still undefeated. you got to feel good about that. Yeah, that's something we have to live up to, being number one pick. Yeah, we've got to represent that. Yes, sir. At Doubletree by Hilton, we believe in nice. Not your okay, fine, just being polite kind of nice, but a genuine nice. The kind that's contagious, that you can't help but take with you. The kind of nice you want to share with others. But don't take our word for it. Come for a stay and help us prove nice travels. Book at Doubletree.com. I'll handle the analyst duties, and we'll go at it one more time. So, the men's game, coming up. Freak alert, Jalen. Not like a slips into baby talk when he's feeling insecure kind of freak. Not even a little bit. Jalen's a freak about hand-slicing all natural meats for every Jimmy John sandwich he makes. Look at his unfettered joy. And not just for ham. You should see him with capicola. Thank you, Jalen. Your meat freakiness means better sandwiches for all. Freaky fresh, freaky fast, Jimmy John's freaky ass. For 42 minutes, he's been trying to bring an entire stadium to its feet. Right, you missed it, buddy. Why does he do it? For glory? Notoriety? We don't know. Frankly, we don't need to know. But much like this hero, Courtyard is all about the game. One, two, three. Whoa, there's my guy. Yes. Go. Snacks? Yeah, man. Eat it up, and we're going to burn it off doing the... We're more than just $7.99 large two-topping pizza delivered. Hey, B, is this it? Watch me. Watch me. We're an end zone dance at your doorstep. No one out here. Nowadays, more and more people are on the go. We are all busy with work and family. Clean Eats has a solution. At every Clean Eats location, we have grab-and-go coolers that are packed full of freshly made breakfast, lunch, and dinner meals. Whether you are a soccer mom, business person, athlete, or just someone that does not have time to prepare your own meals, Clean Eats has you covered. Our grab-and-go cooler will always have a wide selection of meals to satisfy you. Each to-go meal is priced under $7 to make our food very affordable. Be sure to stop and try a to-go meal. 